it was one of the most dangerous planes and aircraft ever created and was certainly the most dangerous of World War II. The Messerschmitt Me-163 Comet might look strange, but it was without doubt a feared plane for its pilots to handle. This plane was groundbreaking at the time. It could reach 1,000 km per hour in level flight due to the rocket power it used, and despite being costly, 370 of them were built for use in World War II. It was a plane that the Germans hoped would change the course of the war, and it seemed like something out of a science fiction movie, but there has never really been a rocket-powered fighter created after the Comet, for very good reason. The Comet was known to have been deadly for the pilots, and could even melt a pilot alive who was sitting in the cockpit if things went wrong. There was one account, for example, during the war of a German pilot literally being dissolved in his seat when the comet crashed towards the ground. But why was it so horrific to fly one of these things? To describe the Messerschmitt Me-163 comet as revolutionary would probably be overdramatic, but it was considered one of Hitler's wonder weapons that he hoped would change the course of the war. The brain power behind the plane, Alexander Lippisch, experimented with strapping rocket engines onto gliders and then the prototype for the Comet emerged in 1941, demonstrating crazily good performance and speed. It impressed the Nazis so much that they began to develop them as interceptors to be used across Germany during World War II. The plan was for the Comet to fly up and intercept enemy planes, including bomber aircraft, but they were introduced in 1944 when the war effort was very much failing for the Germans. It was so quick that pilots regularly flirted with breaking the sound barrier, but when it reached the speed of sound, the plane became rather unstable. The fuel supply on board only lasted around eight minutes from takeoff, and the pilot had to glide back down towards the ground, but quickly the Me-163 Comet developed a reputation for being incredibly dangerous and deadly for its pilots. The biggest problem for the plane, and the scariest element to the Comet's design, was the fact its rocket fuel could kill on contact with the pilot. The engine utilised two highly volatile liquids. First, Tischdorf, a concentrated hydrogen peroxide compound, which had violently reactive oxidizer in it, and also Seestoff, a hydrazine-based fuel cocktail. Now, when these were mixed together, the liquids became hypergolic, which means that they ignited instantly on contact with each other, without the need for a flame or even a spark. This reaction was what caused the incredible speeds, but it was a terrifying concoction. Any internal leak in the comet could cause an immediate explosion, and even tiny spills could start fires. But the worst would be if the fuel came in contact with humans, and particularly the pilot. Contact with the human skin could cause severe chemical burns, and even lead to the skin dissolving and melting off the body. Also, the fumes were so toxic enough that they would kill in enclosed spaces, such as the cockpit. Because of this, pilots were required to wear asbestos-lined chemical-resistant flight suits, and also bathe in neutralising chemicals before and after flight. Despite the engineering, leaks were common, and the aircraft could even detonate without warning if something went catastrophically wrong. Now, to say the fuel was the biggest problem is an understatement. During World War II, one German pilot who suffered possibly the worst death of the conflict, was Luftwaffe ace Oberleutnant Josef Perl. He was a test pilot and was sat in the cockpit of a Comet one day, and as he was about to take off, the takeoff dolly which helped the aircraft get airborne was released too quickly, and it then bounced off the ground and struck the Comet, rupturing the Tischdorf fuel line. You can probably imagine where this is going. Perl's jettisoned his remaining fuel and tried to make an emergency landing, but missed the runway completely, and the nose of the plane hit the ground and then flipped. The aircraft didn't explode, but people on the ground who saw this probably wished for Pearl's sake that it probably did. When the ground crew got to him, it was said by one of the witnesses that, and I quote, when they finally reached him and turned the comet over, they were greeted with a gruesome sight. Tischdorf leaking from the ruptured line had dissolved the unconscious Pearls alive. Another eyewitness account from the incident claimed, and I quote, his right arm had been dissolved to nothing. 
The other arm, as well as his head, were little more than soft jelly. Another crewman said that the contents of the cockpit were nothing but vapours and pink slime, and nothing that could be identified as a human body. So the pilot, Josef Pers, had been dissolved completely. Now the landing was also rather dodgy too, and unlike normal fighter planes, the comet took off from a detachable wheel dolly, which dropped seconds after liftoff and it landed on a retractable skid, not landing gear. This made landing in particular dangerous, as skids provided no shock absorption, and touchdown shocks could rupture fuel tanks, and even a gentle crash risked chemical combustion or explosion. With this, many comets skidded into the ground at high speed and burst their fuel tanks open, or even caught fire. Some pilots who had survived contact with the enemy were then succumbed to the task of just landing the plane. The speed also made it incredibly dangerous. The fact it could exceed 600 miles an hour comfortably, which was faster than any Allied aircraft at the time, was impressive, but it could perform steep climbs into bomber formations. Whilst the speed gave it tremendous capabilities to intercept enemy aircraft, pilots often lost control during approach dives and the plane showed issues when it reached transonic speeds. Controls also became heavy and unresponsive during high velocity manoeuvres. All this led to pilots overshooting targets and getting very disorientated and also blackouts from the immense g-forces were very common. Recovering from a dive in a comet was also very tricky. As mentioned the comet could only remain in the air too for a maximum of eight minutes and when the fuel was exhausted the plane became a silent glider and glided back towards base relying entirely on altitude and wing conditions. Allied escort fighters learned to just wait until the comet ran out of fuel and then they would try and pounce when it was slow and defenceless. The cockpit as well was also a death trap. It offered almost no protection if something went wrong. There was no ejector seat and the pilot sat directly above those volatile fuel lines and there was no time to escape. But one of the worst things about the plane was that it was simply too difficult to fly. Some of the most skilled Luftwaffe pilots and German aviators got behind the controls of a comet and they found that the aircraft was totally unforgiving. Rocket thrust was either full or nothing, there was no gentle throttle control and the climb rates were extreme with the comet capable of climbing 6,000 feet per minute. Tiny errors could send the comet into deadly dive angles and as mentioned even the most skilled and calm pilots found themselves at constant risk. Historical records regarding the plane have shown that there may have been more pilots killed or badly injured due to accidents and fuel mishaps than were shot down by enemy aircraft and ground crew accidents also occurred because of the exposure to the fuel and fuel leaks. It was one of the few combat aircraft of World War II where self-inflicted casualties rivalled enemy kills. But despite this, the Comet did allegedly take out some enemy aircraft. On the 2nd of November 1944, about 12 of them from Jagdschwerder 400 fighter wing intercepted a group of American bombers which were being escorted by P-51 fighters east of Leipzig. The Germans allegedly shot down two bombers, but American fighters shot down four Comets. Despite this, there were more accounts of comets being taken out by Allied air forces. For example, on the 7th of October 1944, two P-51s took out a comet and the pilot somehow managed to survive a crash landing. The Messerschmitt Me-163 comet was a technical gamble born out of desperation at the end of World War II. The Soviets were pushing the Germans back to their homelands following the Battle of Stalingrad and the Allied bombing raids were devastating the Reich. Engineers rushed revolutionary designs into combat with minimal safety features and limited training for pilots and the result was a combat aircraft that worked in theory but was lethal in practice. Now to sum up, the Messerschmitt Comet was a death trap for many reasons. The rocket fuel it used could melt its pilot alive, the landings were treacherous and often could rupture the fuel tanks and the extreme speed led to a loss of control and even the cockpit design prevented escape. All of this made it a plane which was in some cases a death sentence for its pilots. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video maybe click subscribe. Once again thanks for watching.